And you know that you did the canvas right with the right tension if you could hear a drum. So in order to figure out how big your canvas should be. So what kind of fabrics would I use? Um, all you're doing is you're just sliding it like this. And then you want to staple in the center of the frame. I also found that was brilliant <laughs> um, is adding one of these on the back. It so you've probably seen other Etsy sellers sell digital artwork in their stores and maybe you're one of those sellers or um, canvas art prints that they can purchase through print on demand and have that print on demand service send to the customer. Well, I've been looking at the prices of those print on demand canvas art and for like a 12 by 12 inch uh, canvas uh, portrait. They, I know a lot of print-on-demand services are charging around $30. So today I'm going to show you how to do your own canvas artwork for a fraction of the cost of like your print-on-demand printer. Um, all you need is a sublimation printer, a heat press, and of course polyester fabric, which I'll go over the different types of fabric that's out there, um, and a couple tools. And it's really easy to do, and I think you'll be very surprised. So to make this sublimation project, it's pretty easy. All you need is your sublimation printer and heat press. And of course, four of these um, stretcher bars. And you can find these at your local craft store if you're just looking to try this out. So it has like um, the ridge on the outside and it has the um, like a thinner piece of wood right there that fits into another one of these. So it's very easy to put these together. So you're going to need four of these in the size frame that you would like. Um, I have four 11 inch ones right here, so it'll be an 11 inch square. You also need a uh, heavy duty stapler for this and also a polyester fabric. Now there are several different fabrics you can use for this particular project. I'll go over each one and um, which one I kind of like the best, but it's really a personal preference. There's really not a lot of difference between all of them. Um, this is a polyester duck and it's a 600 denier uh, thickness. Now all polyester fabric is going to be like a weave. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's, they're like dots and the um, 600 denier, you're going to see the dots a lot more clearly. So, um, and that's what I printed this on. So you're gonna see, you're gonna see the texture of that poly duck. And there's actually other fabrics that you can use where you're not gonna see that texture as much, but all the fabrics do have a certain texture to it. Now, if you're already doing this on some scale right now, using a POD printer, print on demand printer, or you're selling currently digital art um, as a, digital file on your Etsy store um, and want to try this out, then you can go through a company called Fisher Textiles and uh, you're going to need a business account in order to start a, um, an account with them in order to order from them. And they have a 25 yard minimum, minimum, and, but they also send you samples um, of different types of fabrics that you can sublimate both in t-shirt and home furnishings. And they do have two options that look more like a linen or a cotton canvas. And one of them is the poly canvas and it's an 8.4 ounce. It's, it's kind of lightweight, but I think it does, I think it looks like more of a canvas. It doesn't have the poly duck look. It has more of a linen type canvas look. It has the very thin lines. So it has a, um, if you're looking for a different texture than the poly duck, this would be another option and you can see down there the label that's what it is so it has the item number and everything and um, it comes in a width of 120 inches and it does sublimate very well I just did a little tiny frog on this one but if you look very closely let me see if I can get the let's get my face out of there it looks like a linen and it doesn't have the same texture as the poly duck this is the poly duck again um, it's more, you're going to see a texture. It's kind of like a, again, like round circles. And it does affect the print a little bit because you're going to see that. But it still looks very nice. Again, this is all personal preference. It doesn't mean it's better, one's better than the other. It's just, you know, different options. So this looks more like a cotton uh, canvas or linen canvas versus the poly duck. 
So if you're more into, if you already know you want to do this as part of your Etsy store, then definitely this is going to be the more, most expensive option if you expect to spend at least three to four hundred dollars on your first order because you do have to order a 25 yard minimum and um, I believe this one is almost twenty dollars a yard um, but again it's 120 inches wide so it comes on pretty large rolls so um, you have that option and also there's another one this is um, by Fisher Textiles and it is thicker, but it still has that poly uh, duck look to it, but it, they're, they're a lot more, I want to say tightly woven. So you're not going to see the circles as much. And I did print on this. Let me see if I can get it clear here. I can't get it clear, but um, this is what it is. I'll put it right here so you can look at it. So this also comes, this comes in a width of 125 inches and it's an eight ounce, but strange, oddly enough, it feels thicker than this 8.4 ounce linen look, linen texture like uh, canvas. So um, you do have options out there if you already know this is what you want to do. So um, like I said, if you're just looking to start and you just want to see if this is something you can do, then just go with the poly duck. And it's, like I said, this is $8.99, I think, per yard. And it's uh, it's the cheaper option. And it does give a good quality picture. So um, it, again, you're just gonna see the texture more on the poly duck. Now there are a couple other stores that you could buy from. One is uh, Blick Art Materials. I think I called it Blick Art Store before. Now they do have a canvas roll, a, poly, a polyester, unprimed polyester fabric uh, on a roll. Now you want unprimed, you don't want anything primed because what primed means it's ready for like acrylic paints or oil paints. You don't want anything primed um, only because the, the dye sublimation when you put it under a heat press, the ink is not going to adhere to the fabric if it's, if it's primed. So make sure it's unprimed um, if you buy from uh, Blick Art Materials. Now, and there's also another place called Big Duck Canvas, and they also have, I believe, a poly duck. And now it's 900 denier, so it's a thicker poly duck than Condi's, uh, 600 denier. So um, it's an 8.5 ounce, so there's not gonna be much difference between Condi's poly duck and this Big Duck Canvas one. Um, it's uh, item number DS1010 ELE. I'll put all these stuff down. <laughs> I'll put all these um, different fabrics down um, in the description so you can get samples, um, you know, maybe sign up for business accounts with different um, companies. Big Duck Canvas is gonna have the retail prices on their website, but if you sign up for a wholesale account, you'll get cheaper prices. So just keep that in mind. Um, and again, I'll put all these stores down below so you can actually get samples of each one. Um, it's just basically, again, personal preference. Now let's get to pressing one of these onto some fabric. So in order to figure out how big your canvas should be, uh, you gotta know what your frame is first. So in other words, I have uh, nine inch stretcher bars and I'm gonna do a nine inch square frame. So I'm gonna have them kind of like this when I put them together. Now, in order for the canvas to wrap around that nine inch frame, you want it to have two inches extra on each side. And that's if you're using the three quarter inch wide uh, stretcher bars. Um, anything bigger, you wanna add an extra inch. So these require another two inches on each side. So instead of a nine inch frame, your canvas is gonna be 13 inches square. So you gotta add two inches on each side that equals four inches total. So this is a nine inch frame, it's going to be <laughs> when I put it together. So you're gonna be adding two inches on each side. So that makes it 13 inches total for your canvas, um, both lengthwise and top to bottom. So before I print my canvas, as you can tell, it's kind of wrinkled. So I'm gonna pre-press this fabric um, at 400 degrees for a few seconds, just to get the wrinkles out and any possible, you know, if it shrinks a little bit. I never really had the poly duck shrink on me. In fact, the other fabrics that I have used never really shrunk at all. 
um, or at least not that much, maybe an eighth of an inch. But so put this under the heat press and then after you pre press it for the few seconds, come back here and then cut it to size. Um, in our case, it would be the 13 by 13 for the um, nine by nine frame. So if you wanna prevent ghosting the image on your um, fabric, this is the technique that I use. I have explained in another video. In fact, I'll leave it up here um, as a link so that you can check it out. But this is meant to stick to the heat press platen when it's all done pressing so that you don't get ghosting. So this doesn't move on your fabric and create a ghost effect. So um, this is what I do when I print any kind of fabric. Now to put these together, um, all you're doing is you're just sliding it like this. Just kind of work it. You can muscle it in or you can get a rubber mallet. So I was able to get it this close without a rubber mallet. So I'm just gonna keep going around. See, so sometimes you may have to sand it too, occasionally. These are cheaper ones. Um, I bought these at Hobby Lobby, so they're a little bit rough, but I, you get the idea of it. Now I'm just muscling this in um, as much as possible. You don't want to put it in all the way yet until you get all four connected and then you can make it straight later. So I'm just going to again muscle that in. Oops, you can't see. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty crooked right now, but like I said, if you use a rubber mallet, <laughs> it'll be better. So you'll be using a rubber mallet all the way around until these are flush, these corners are flush with each other. And it's very easy. It's a, just simple taps. Um, I'm gonna go on a harder, I'm gonna go on a hard table. This one, this one's not very good for banging things around. So this is after the rubber mallet and it was very easy. I just did a couple taps on each uh, end like this and it came out perfect. So um, and it's perfectly square and it's nine by nine. So your next step is to actually find the center of your canvas and that's so that you can put it center with your frame. So in order to do this, you want to do it on the back side of the canvas. You don't want to do it on the print side. And you also want to use an air soluble pen or even a water soluble pen, something that will disappear so you won't see that mark. It, I'm not making a huge mark, so it's not really going to make a huge difference if you don't have one of these pens. So you're probably not going to see it anyway. But it really helps to have the tools of a sewing mat and a sewing grid ruler because what you're doing in order to find the center, you know that your canvas is 13 by 13. So this, the, the middle mark will be at six and a half. So you set your ruler at six and a half all the way up. And of course the ruler will give you the six and a half mark right here for the middle. So it makes it really easy to find the center when you have these two tools. So if you do so and you have these <laughs> tools, it makes it really easy to find any center of any canvas. Okay, now you're gonna find the center of your frame. And in order to do that, I just use a regular ruler and I make sure that dot meets the four and a half inch mark. Because our frame is nine inches by nine inches, I wanna make sure that dot falls at the four and a half mark. So I just look and if it's slightly off, I'll just fix it. That's four and a half. And then I go like this, at the nine inches, and it's right on the mark. So, and that's my center. 
and I just make sure the frame is straight. I'm gonna just make it a little bit more straighter. I think it's the canvas here that I moved by accident. There. I can actually see the lines to the sewing mat underneath, so it's making it a little bit easier. I know I can put it on the two inch mark, which would be the 11 inch mark and the two inch line. So it makes it a little bit easier this way, which is why the sewing mat comes in handy. <laughs> Okay, so now we have our frame centered. I just want to make sure my frog looks good here. Yeah, I think that looks good. Now we can begin to staple. Okay, so now you get the frame centered. You want to really hold it down and then fold one of these edges like so. Okay, and you just want to really hold it with one hand and then you want to staple in the center of the frame. The staple is not going to go all the way down against your frame. So if you have a hammer, just do a little tap. I have a small hammer here. It's perfect for this type of um, application. You just want to go there. And now it's meeting the actual frame. Okay, so now you want to do the opposite side. Make sure that's straight. Yeah, definitely if you turn it and it makes it crooked, you wanna make it straight. So make sure all your lines are even. Okay, so now you wanna grab this end. Now you wanna pull as tight as you can. And you wanna put it in the middle on this side, exactly the opposite from this first staple. And I'm gonna reach behind the phone here so I can see what I'm doing behind my camera. Try not to get your fingers. And if you make a mistake, you can actually take the staples out too with some needle nose pliers or, I find that if you hold the handle of the stapler towards the end, it works better. <laughs> there. And again, you're gonna have to make sure that's, yeah, that's good. Again, you want to use the hammer. Just make sure that's really tight against the frame. Now you want to do one of the sides or the top or the bottom. You want to pull it like that. And in the middle. And then on the other side. You always want to start in the middle on all four sides. And pull as tight as you can. Okay, so now you want to start. Look on the other side, see if it looks good. Looks good. Yeah, looks pretty good. So, all right, so now you want to continue on. Now you want to make another staple where you started and about an inch apart. I made this a little off center, but I normally like to make it the same um, nice straight line. But today I'm not doing that, so. <laughs> and again, you want to be an inch from the center staple that you just, just did. I'm trying to reach over my phone, so it's a little bit hard. <laughs> You want to do that for all four sides, about an inch apart. Okay, 
And then when you get to the first side again, you wanna go on the opposite side an inch away. Make sure you're still pulling tight. Okay, we can fit probably one more staple on the edge that looks like it needs it because this one's closer to here, the edge, and you want another one over here. Here it's even, you can pick an edge. Once upon a time, this used to take me like 10 minutes or five minutes. <laughs> I haven't done this in like 20 years, so. Okay, so for the corners, and I added extra staples, um, so I'm closer to the corner. It makes it a little bit easier that way, especially in a smaller one. So to make a corner, you just wanna kind of make a triangle like this. So you have it up like this, and you kind of want to do this as tight as you can. You want this edge to be just above that edge, like so, so, like that. Now you want to staple here. Let me make that a little bit better. So once you get a few under your belt, this will go so much faster. <laughs> And don't worry about the fraying, you can actually get rid of those sprays later. You just don't want it to hang over the edge here, this fold. You wanna make it show, so it's somewhat even to the top. You want it to look nice, even though it's on the back. Now you can even add an extra staple up here, but we'll leave it blank for now. I'm gonna bring it closer to here, so it makes it a little easier. This one, I think I'm gonna go this way. You just wanna make sure it's tight this way and this way. Okay, now you can get rid of these sprays or use um, Fray Ease, which is a sewing um, liquid that you put on this. I find that you really don't need to, but just to clean it up, looks better when you take these off. Now you can make this even if you'd like. Just so it looks cleaner. Now I'm just going to go all the way around and get rid of all these little frays. You can also use a, um, I wouldn't really do it for this particular project, but you can use a lighter and just go around just to melt the edges so they don't fray again. Or you can use Fray Ease, which is um, a liquid that you use in sewing. You can find it in any sewing department at like Hobby Lobby, or I believe Michael's has it too. 
but pretty much any sewing area would have what's called fray ease. Okay, so what I do also, I could, what I did with this side is I trimmed it like so. So that's even. And then I took my stapler and I made a corner staple like so. Don't want to get my fingers. Probably could clean this up a little bit more so that it makes it look a little bit better but I think it looks pretty decent the way it is right now and there's the mark from our other side but because I used a water soluble that will disappear because I had one on this one as well I had it for the middle of the hummingbird here too but usually disappears within 24 to 48 48 hours so I think our frog came out pretty cool now, if I was selling something like this, I'd probably practice a little bit more. Um, it's been a while, guys, <laughs> since I've last done these, but I think it came out pretty decent um, for my second or third time. But uh, yeah, I think it looks kind of cool. Yeah, I think it looks cute. I think it looks cute. And you know that you did the canvas right with the right tension, if you could hear a drum. So it's really tight and it's perfect. So now I just get add the hardware on the back or even just leave it like this. If I'm sending it out to a customer, they can put the hardware on if they wish to or put it in a frame. So if you're using a thinner fabric like the 600 denier poly duck, um, you're going to have, if you hold it up against the light, you're going to see a, um, you're going to see the frame through the actual design. Um, not sure if I can get the effect, but you're going to see like the frame, this part of it on the front. And if you don't want something like that, it's not a huge deal, but I noticed on a couple of canvas art from, this one is from Walmart, they um, actually put like a cardboard, like a poster board, and they made it the size of the frame and they wrapped the canvas around that poster board. So in other words, the poster board's underneath this uh, canvas art. So as you can tell, this is a poster board. You can do that, but also what I also found that was brilliant <laughs> um, is adding one of these on the back. It actually hides all your work, all your staples, and has uh, the actual hanging holes based on if it's a vertical um, size or horizontal. This is just my cat, Ted. <laughs> now this was uh, done at Walmart as well. And, uh... So what kind of fabrics would I use in order to do like you know, portraits, family portraits, uh, wedding portraits, um, something that's a little bit on the high end side. Um, I would actually use this one. And of course it's the most expensive, <laughs> but it's, it's the element. Um, I think this has a really great feel to it and it actually does, um, where's that Walmart one? Walmart seems to use the same thing, only they use a a PVC type of canvas because they're actually directly printing on the canvas rather than using a heat press um, like we would be doing for sublimation. So this mimics that canvas um, almost to the T. And it's a thicker canvas. I think it prints very well and I think it just looks professional. It's a tight weave poly canvas. Now my second um, go-to canvas would also be a more expensive one. And it's this one. It's the linen look. I think this has a really neat look to it because it doesn't look, it doesn't look like a poly duck. It has the um, linen lines to it. I think it just looks really authentic to a, 
to a, a linen canvas that you normally use for oils and ac acrylics. Um, it just it matches it to the tee. It is a thinner fabric, so it's something that you probably want to add the um, like an extra uh, poster board behind it, or even something like this um, behind it because it is such a thin fabric. Um, it's those two are not waterproof, so um, it's an actual fabric, so it feels nice and looks professional in my opinion. And I always look for like the actual texture of the uh, fabric to mimic that of a cotton canvas or a linen canvas that I would normally oil paint on um, <clears throat> or do acrylics on. And my third choice <laughs> would be the poly duck. Um, it still does a good job. I just, I'm, my, I guess the downfall of this particular fabric, um, the, whether it's the 600 denier or the 900 denier, I think the downfall of this is because you get to, you can see like the tiny dots. The dots are super big on this and it makes, it shows up on the actual print. And I just don't think it looks as professional, but it's great to practice on. So if you're looking just to see if this is something you want to do, um, you know, practice on, I would practice on this. I wouldn't practice on something, you know, nice like this. So I would practice on the poly duck if you're looking to do something more professional looking. Um, but again, it still does give a nice um, picture. I just, I don't think I would use it for like portraits. I would use it for like, you know, um, maybe vector images like the, the hummingbird or the, um, the frog. I would use it for something like that. And I wouldn't use it for like portraits, like my cat Ted here. <laughs> I wouldn't use it for something like that because I think the dots would show up and kind of distract from the actual photo. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can ask me in the comments below and I'll try to answer as best as I can. But until next time, have fun creating your art canvas. Mm -hmm.